The first reading is from Exodus chapter 40 verses 33 through 35. He erected the court all around the tabernacle and the altar, and hung up the veil for the gateway of the court. Thus Moses finished the work. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses was not able to enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled on it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. And the next reading is from John chapter 1 verse 14. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we saw his glory, glory as of the only begotten from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Shiloh Choir, for that amazing praise. I felt the Spirit of God truly inspire our hearts. And just as the lyrics speak out, I believe that God is still working even now. Amen? Amen. Uh, We may go through many hardships and difficulties, but we need to just trust in God's heart. And just trust that God is a good God, and that he's going to work everything out for his glory. And as we put our faith and trust in him, I believe that there will be peace and comfort in our hearts. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Uh, Through today's uh, main passage, Exodus chapter 40, verse 33 through 35, and John chapter 1, verse 14, I want to share the message titled, The Dedication of the Temple and God's Glory. The Dedication of the Temple and God's Glory. Our main passage was Exodus chapter 40, verse 33 through 35, and John chapter 1, verse 14. And the topic is the dedication of the tabernacle. So the tabernacle was completed, and God's glory filled it. But this was actually just a foreshadow of Jesus Christ, who was God himself, the Word. And he came into this world as a human. And so that is the picture that we are seeing through the tabernacle. You see, God made a covenant with the people of God. And first he said, I will be your God. And he's saying, I will be your husband. More than just a God, he's saying, I will be your husband. And the second point is, you will be my people. Or in a more intimate um, relationship, you will be my bride. So the people of Israel would be the bride of God. And God would be their husband. And God said, I will be with you. I will dwell amongst you. And God did that through the tabernacle. So the tabernacle is what we call the gospel of the eyes. It is the visible gospel. It is uh, the visible aspect and manifestation of the covenant that God made and established and ratified with the people of God. And so through the tabernacle, God was able to meet with the people and be with them. So the first point I want to make is the tabernacle completed according to the pattern shown by God. This is the first point. The tabernacle completed according to the pattern shown by God. And there are several points that I want to make concerning this. And first, God commanded Himself. He Himself commanded for the people to build the tabernacle. And so he showed the pattern of the tabernacle on the sixth ascent of Moses going up to Mount Sinai. And God said that you will make this tabernacle according to the exact pattern that I will show you. So there's a certain design that God had in mind and he showed it to Moses. And so we see that God himself is the designer. So God is the designer and he's giving the pattern 
of the tabernacle to his people through Moses. So this pattern in Hebrew is tavanit, and it's form, shape, or structure, tavanit. And God is showing the exact measurements, the exact weights, the exact colors, materials, shapes, and the exact patterns for each part of the tabernacle. So there is an exact way that God wanted the people to build the tabernacle. And the reason is, is that the earthly tabernacle, the visible tabernacle, was a shadow of the heavenly tabernacle. So Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5, it says that this earthly tabernacle was just a copy. It was a shadow of the heavenly. So... In terms of today, how can we apply this? God has a specific way that He wants us to build His temple. There's a specific way that God wants us to worship Him. There's a specific way that God wants us to live our lives of faith. And so we need to accept God's sovereignty and his control in our lives. So our lives of faith are not living any way that we want or according to our thoughts. But God has a specific pattern, a specific way that He wants us to live our lives of faith. There's a specific way to build His church. And this is all done in God's control, His divine order, and uh, the authority of the word. So in Hebrews 9, 23 through 24, it says, Therefore it was necessary for the copies of the things in the heavens to be cleansed with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifice than these. For Christ did not enter a holy place made with hands, a mere copy of the true one, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. So, the earthly tabernacle was a picture of the heavenly tabernacle. In fact, Christ is the reality of that tabernacle. And he entered into that heavenly tabernacle once and for all. So there's a construction period of the tabernacle. And the Israelites came out of Egypt on the 15th day of the first month in 1446 BC. And they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai in the third month of that year. So the third month on the first day. So if you look at the Hebrew, it is Hodesh, which is the new moon. So every month in the Jewish calendar that the people started, it started off with the new moon, the new moon. So every first day of each month was a new moon. So they arrived in the wilderness of Sinai on the first day of the third month, and it was the new moon. And the next day, we see that Moses uh, started to go up and make his ascent to Mount Sinai. So you can see on the calendar that they arrived on the first day, and then starting from the second day, it got, Moses started to make his ascent, the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth ascent. So as I mentioned uh, on the sixth ascent, Moses prayed for 40 days, and this is the time that God showed the pattern of the tabernacle, and it was the first time that God, He wrote on the tablets the Ten Commandments with His uh, finger, and He gave it to Moses. And the time that Moses came down on the eighth ascent was the tenth day of the seventh month. So this was the Day of the Atonement. And so from that very day, we count. We count when the tabernacle was started to build. So from the 10th day of the 7th month, we see that Moses came down and they would have started to build the tabernacle. And the tabernacle was erected on the first day of the first month in the second year of the Exodus, which was 1445. So if you see Exodus chapter 40, verse 2, let's... Why don't we read that together? 
Ready, begin. On the first day of the first month, you shall set up the tabernacle of the tent of meeting. So this is the second year of the Exodus, 1445 B.C. So from the 10th day of the 7th month in 1446 B.C. until the first day of the first month in the next year, it was a total of 169 days. So it took 169 days to build and erect that tabernacle. And God's glory filled that tabernacle. And there was a purpose that God had in building the tabernacle. And first of all, it was a place of worship. It was a place of sacrifice. So through the tabernacle, which was at the center of uh, the Israelites' camp, they worshipped God. They offered up sacrifices in this place. So it's like the church today. We come to church to offer sacrifices to God through Jesus Christ, through the sacrifice of Jesus. And so... The church is a place where we sacrifice and give holy offerings to God. Church is not a a social club. It's not a place where we come to do business. Church is not a place to have a, a social gathering. It's not some kind of club that we belong to. But it is the body of Christ with Christ as the head. And it is the place where we come to Worship before God. It is the place where we come before God and worship in spirit and in truth. Secondly, it is a place where we meet with God or it is a place where God meets with His people. And so God says that I will meet with you. I will meet with you to speak to you there. I will meet there with the sons of Israel. So This tabernacle was not just a building or a tent, but God truly met with His people. So it was a place where God's presence met with the people. And I'm going to talk about this in the future, but actually God spoke through the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire that guided the Israelites during their wilderness journey. So this is uh, another amazing word that I'll say for another day. So Exodus chapter 25, verse 8. Why don't we read that together? Verse 8, ready, begin. And let them construct a sanctuary for me that I may dwell amongst them. So God is dwelling with them and he's meeting with them through this temple. So God is coming down. God is coming down and meeting with His people. So it is that kind of picture. And third, it was a place where God spoke. It is a place where God spoke and proclaimed His word. So He proclaimed it through Moses. So Moses would come before God and God would speak through the two cherubim, the Ark of the Covenant. And it was through that that cloud was resting upon the a tabernacle, and God spoke through the tabernacle, through the Ark of the Covenant, between the two cherubim. So it was a place where God's word was proclaimed. And this is the important thing because we meet God through the word of God, through his word. God is the word, John chapter 1, 1. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. So we meet with God through the word. We hear God's voice through the word of God. We receive answers to our prayers through the word of God. So we don't get answers through some kind of dream or some kind of supernatural manifestation. But the assured and certain answer comes from the word of God himself. So the Bible is our standard to check and to be able to examine if God is speaking to us. So the word of God, the proclaimed word of God, his voice is heard through his word of God. And next, it was a place uh, that became the center of Israel's camp, the hub that united the covenantal community. So the Israelites camped around the uh, tabernacle. The tabernacle was 
at the center of the camp. And on each side, there were, th- um, there were three tribes. So on the east side, on the south side, the west side, on the north side, there were three tribes in each. And so let me show you that. So Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Reuben, Simeon, God, Ephraim, Manasseh, Benjamin, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. And so God, he made the people center around the tabernacle. And you see that Moses and Aaron and his sons were around. They were closest to the tabernacle. So when they marched out, we see that Judah took the lead. Judah took the lead. But in front of Judah was the Ark of the Covenant. So Judah, Issachar, Zebulun, Reuben, Simeon, God, Ephraim, Manasseh, Benjamin, Dan, Asher, and Naphtali. So this is the order when they marched. So there was an order. There was always an order. And the Ark of the Covenant was always in front of them or it was in the center of them. And that is how we need to live our lives of faith. Church has to become the center of our lives. And church is what connects the community of God. So we are the body of Christ. And we are all members of that body. And everybody has a different part. Everybody is created differently. So we shouldn't compare ourselves with each other. So there are things that I can do that the other person can't do. And there's things that I cannot do that the other person can do. And so here we see that uh, God is working amongst the body of Christ. We all have a part in doing his work. And so God had a certain order. And he established the tabernacle to be at the center. And they lived their lives of faith according to God's command. I pray that we can become united like this tabernacle. Amen. And this time during the summer retreat, the conferences and the seminars, Pastor Yu, he really complimented Shiloh and all of the people who worked so hard you know, with the president and with all of the rest of the team. And this time there were many compliments and praises by our saints from overseas. And especially the pastors were very pleased and happy that we were able to take care of them. And so... Uh, everybody did a good job, you know, in their certain place. Everybody did a good job. Everybody had a different part. And I believe that God was glorified. And I believe that God will repay you according to your work. Amen. So we don't have to compare, you know, oh, why is not that person working as hard? But you are rewarded according to your work. Amen. So second, let's look at the order of assembling the tabernacle. So there was... This is the main point for today. There is an order of assembling the tabernacle. There's 22 steps, and we'll go through each step in the next 10 to 15 minutes, really briefly. We're not going to go into detail, but we'll just look at the 22 steps. And uh, it's not a coincidence that there's 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So that tells us that there is an order There's an order of raising the tabernacle. And not only that, but there's nothing missing. So it is a complete process of building and erecting the tabernacle. So first, they laid its sockets, the sockets. So this is a socket. This is two sockets. And you can see that there was a hole, the silver sockets. And there were holes in them so that the boards could be stuck into them. So the first, the first step was to lay the sockets. So if you look at this uh, picture here, we see that the sockets were driven into the ground about halfway, and that the boards were stuck into, they came into the two sockets. So here, first they laid the sockets, and there were silver sockets laid under the boards. So there were 96 silver sockets that were laid under the boards. So two sockets per board, and there were 48 boards. So 48 boards, if there were two sockets for each board, that's a total of 96 sockets. And then there were four silver sockets for the pillars 
at the entrance of the most holy place. So this is different. There were four different silver sockets for the pillars. And then there were uh, five bronze sockets for pillars at the entrance of the holy place. So this is uh, in the entrance of the holy place. So this is the actual tent. So five bronze sockets. So if you look at the uh, second step, it's set up the boards. So if you look at the boards, uh, its height is 10 cubits, which is 4.56 meters. And the width is 1.5 cubits, which is 68.4 centimeters. And the thickness is 0.25 cubits, which is 11.4 centimeters. So the width is 1.5 cubits, and the thickness is 0.25 cubits, which is 11.4 centimeters. And if you look at the board, each board had four golden rings, which held the bars that went through. And then there were two tenons on the side of the board. And it connected each of the boards. And there's two tenons on the bottom, as you can see. So those two tenons actually are part of the board, and they go into the two silver sockets. So the two tenons are like the two like heads that stick out, and you stick them into the silver sockets. So you set up the boards in this way. So the sockets were laid down, and then they set up the boards in this way. So they were connected together like this, uh, side to side, and they were put into the silver sockets through the two tenons. So this is how the boards were set up. And so as you can see that there were eight boards on the west side, 20 boards on the north side, and 20 boards on the south side. So how many boards is that? 48, right? And so there's two sockets for each board, so 96, 96 sockets, as I mentioned before. So in the, in the west side, in the back, west side, there are eight boards, but there are actually six boards that are set up uh, individually, and then on the corners, uh, we can study this later, there are um, one board in the corner, that was cut in half, exactly in half, and there was a ring that was put on top. And there, on the other corner, there was another board that was exactly cut in half, and there was a ring that was put into it, so in this fashion. So it's actually one board that was cut exactly in half, exactly in half. So there's six full boards, and one each on each corner, which was cut in half, so that's eight boards, eight boards. And uh, we can study about, you know, the deeper meanings later. We're just going over the uh, superficial uh, measurements. And so here you can see that uh, the width was 0.75 cubits, which is exactly half. Exactly half. So here, here's a third step, which is inserting the bars. So now they set up the boards, and they inserted the bars through the rings. So four rings on each board, right? So there you go, there are four rings on each board, they were connected together, but there's actually another, there's four bars, but there's actually another bar in the middle that goes through inside, you cannot see. So four bars, and then one in the middle that goes inside the boards, like that. So there's a middle board that you cannot see. And this is representing uh, God's invisible love uh, his grace that you cannot see. But, but this, is, this is what holds us together invisibly. And this is the work of God. Holding us together as the body of Christ. And next, the fourth step is they erected the pillars. So the five bronze pillars in the front and four bronze, the four silver pillars in the entrance to the most holy place. Uh, they erected the pillars in that fashion. And then the fifth step was to spread the tent over the tabernacle. And so the inner curtain. So there, there are four layers. So the first was the inner curtain, and then it was embroidered with cherubim. 
uh, using blue, purple, scarlet, and finely twisted linen. And this is a, a model of the spiritual heavenly realm. So the cherubim, it's like a heavenly, uh, heavenly picture. And this shows us that we're all different colors. We're all different materials. But we're knitted together to make one curtain. And it's a, a beautiful picture of the unity of the body of Christ. And uh, it was made with ten sheets of curtains and joined together with gold clasps. So here is the inside uh, version. This was the uh, inner curtain. And this is a reminder, the cherubim is a reminder of the Garden of Eden. So you remember the cherubim guarded the Garden of Eden with the flaming sword. So the next, which is the outer curtain, it was made out of uh, the black goat's hair. And this is representing repentance. So in Israel, this is what goats look like. And if you look at the sheep in Israel, they're not like the white sheep that we think about, but they're actually very dark as well. The wool is very dark, and it's not like the white you know, wool that we think about. So the goat, uh, not all goats, but you know, many of them are very dark in this way. So it's made with 11 sheets, uh, five sheets of curtain and six sheets of curtains that were connected together with bronze claps. So little bronze claps connected uh, these uh, outer curtain parts. And then there was another curtain, the covering of the tent. So there was uh, the covering of the tent and it was made out of the ram's skins dyed red. So ram's skins dyed red. So this is obviously a picture of uh, the blood of Jesus Christ as the, perf as the perfect sacrifice for us. So this is the sixth step. We're still talking about the sixth step. And the last one, uh, it, it is the outer curtain. And it protected the tabernacle from the wilderness, uh, wind, sand, the sun's heat, and rain. So this is uh, from the uh, like otter's skin. And uh, this is symbolizing God's perfect protection. His absolute protection uh, in our lives of faith. So that was the sixth part. And after these six parts in the Bible, it says, Thus it was done as the Lord had commanded Moses. So... Uh, it says this seven, amazingly seven times. There is this phrase, thus it was done. Just like the days of creation, God said it was created and God saw that it was good. And so we see this happening uh, in the, the creation of the uh, tabernacle. So this is the first time that God says, thus it was done as the Lord had commanded Moses. So the seventh point was that they took the testimony and put it into the ark. So in the, um, the uh, ark, they had the uh, golden jar holding, holding the manna, the two stone tablets of the covenant, and Aaron's budded rod. So it fit into the, uh, the ark of the covenant. And they put the, uh, the lid on it, which we, we call that the mercy seat. We call it the mercy seat. And they put two poles when they carried it uh, into the rings. So this is the picture. And we see the law, uh, uh, the book of the law that was placed in front of the Ark of the Covenant. The book of the law. So this is the eighth step. And the ninth step is they set up a veil for the screen, which is uh, the veil, the entrance into the most holiest of holies. So here you see the holiest of holies and the entrance, which was uh, uh, closed by this screen, this veil. And you see in the uh, New Testament, when Jesus Christ died on the cross, we see that the veil in the temple had ripped from the top to the bottom in two. And the Bible says that uh, the veil was uh, representing Christ's flesh. And now through Christ's flesh, the way to God was opened. He became the living way through His flesh being sacrificed on the cross. 
And so again, you see the cherubim, and there is the picture of the Garden of Eden. But now, that way has been opened. So, uh, Hebrews chapter 4, 16, it says, Therefore, go to the throne room of God with confidence to receive mercy in our time of need. So there are times when we need help, and we need grace, and we need mercy. And God says, come to me, to the throne of grace, with confidence and by faith, so that God can give mercy and grace to help you in your time of need. So sometimes we need help. We need strength. We need courage. We need extra faith. And we attain that by coming before God through prayer and by faith. So I pray that whatever situation that you're in, that you may come before God by faith and that that way is open and that you come before God through the blood of Jesus Christ. And God will answer your prayers. He will help you. He will give you the grace to overcome the trials, to overcome the pain and overcome the uh, the sufferings that you are going through. And please believe that. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. So here, the veil for the entrance of the most holy place. After they set up the veil, again, the Bible says, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. This is the second time. Second time. So the tenth is, the tenth step was they put the table in the tent of the meeting. So this is the table of showbread. So here you see the table, and then the 11th is they set the arrangement of the bread. So they set up the table, the 11th step was they put uh, the bread, which was piled up, two piles of six, and on the top there were pure frankincense, and this is called the bread of the presence. So uh, we see that picture of that. And again, after this step, the third time, God says, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. So the third time. And then the twelfth step was, they put the lampstand in the tent of the meeting. So the lampstand. And the thirteenth step was, they lit uh, the lamps before, the, before God. So they lit the lamps. This was the thirteenth step, twelfth and thirteenth. And you see that the direction of the lamps were facing forward to light the uh, the bread that was on the, ta- uh, the table of the showbread. And so this shows us that we are lamps of God. We need to be uh, continually burning. So this lamp was continually burning. It never went out. It never went dark. It never snuffed out. So it was always shining. So that's our lives of faith. No matter what we are going through, we may be going through good times, We may be going through bad times. We may be going through joy or we may be going through sadness. But our lamps need to be lit and we must not grow dark in any circumstance. And we need to keep our lamps burning through the Word of God, through the oil of the Holy Spirit. So that's what it is teaching us. It was always kept burning. And then after they set up the lamp, the fourth time God says, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. Then the 14th step is they set up the uh, altar, the golden altar, which is the, uh, the altar of incense. Right before the, uh, uh, the veil, and there were four horns, and this is symbolizing the authority and power of prayer. And they burnt fragrance and uh, fragrant incense on top of it. So here, there's the censer. The bowl that carries the, scent, the uh, fragrance or the incense is called the golden censer. This was put on fire through the coals uh, that were burning in the, the altar of burnt offering. And this is the fifth time God said, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And the sixteenth was, they set up the veil for the doorway of the tabernacle. The 16th, they set up the veil for the doorway of the tabernacle. And the 17th step, they set up the altar of the burnt offering. 
And the 18th step was they offered on it the burnt offering and the meal offering. That's the 18th step. And so after that, the sixth time, God says, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And then after they set up the burnt offering and offered up the meal sacrifice, the 19th step was they placed the labor basin in front of the tent. And the 20th step was they placed the water, the water inside of it. And after that, for the seventh time, it says, just as the Lord had commanded Moses. And then the 21st step was they erected the court. So they erected the uh, pillars and they, uh, they raised up the, uh, uh, the curtains. If you can see on the screen there. So there are the curtains and this is a whole, you know, another story. And there's the curtains that were uh, made out of fine linen. And they made uh, like a fence. They erected the court. So here, let's look at the process of that. So they erected the courts, and then the second uh, was that they hung up the veil for the gateway. And so they set up the door, and after the door was set up, or that screen, finally, it says in Exodus 40, 33. Uh, let's read this together. Ready? Begin. Thus, Moses finished the work. Amen? So we are finished as well, almost. So... That was uh, the 21st and 22nd step was to separate the holy from the world. And so the third point, the administration of redemptive history in the tabernacle. So in the creation account, God said, and it was so, and God saw that it was good. God said that seven times. Same thing in the tabernacle. It was done according to the command of the Lord. And so... Uh, that was said seven times that we, as we saw. And this is connected to the cross. And it was uh, on the cross that Jesus spoke seven times. And on the last word, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. So this is all connected. The creation count, the tabernacle, which is the picture of Christ, and the cross, where he spoke seven times. So as a conclusion, as a conclusion, let's look at this quickly. So here's a, a 3D view of the tabernacle and going inside. There's the uh, book of the law in front of the Ark of the Covenant. So let's read Matthew chapter 27, verse 51. Ready, begin. And behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook, and the rocks were split. So this happened when Jesus died. And um, Hebrews 10, 19 and 20. Let's read this together. Ready, begin. Since therefore, brethren, we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh. So through the tabernacle we learned that uh, Jesus is the true temple. But not only that, but we become the temple in the last days. First Corinthians 3.16 says we are the temple of God. And we are the place where God dwells. And so may we be able to be filled with God's glory. And may we be able to be connected into a community of faith like the living temple, uh, the living body of Christ with Christ as the head. And as we go into our new general assemblies and our elections and we get ready for the new year, uh, may we pray and seek God's will and His uh, face to understand what to do and to be able to understand His will for Shiloh. And... As we get answers from God, I believe that God will lead Shiloh into a new uh, and higher place, uh, a farther place. He will give us a bigger task and as we are able to be faithful with the little things. And uh, I believe that God's 
His will of、uh, world missions will be accomplished through Shiloh in the work and task that He's been given to us. And as you do so, may you have confidence that God will repay you, and may you be assured that God will be with you and that God's glory will be protecting you. And I pray and bless this upon you in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for the Lord's day, for your grace, and for your abundant love. For your love is unchanging, and your presence is always with us, giving us comfort and hope in our time of need. Father, there are times when we go through hardships, or we go through problems, or anxieties, we go through worries because of difficult problems in our lives. But may we be able to seek Your kingdom and seek your will first so that all of these things can be provided for us. May we come into your presence daily, moment by moment. May we be always be walking with you. May we always be in your face, seeking your face, and be in your place of glory. May we always be coming before you by faith to your throne of grace to receive mercy. And help in our time of need. We thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Let's give glory to God.